Hey guys, Will here, and today I'll be bringing you a tutorial on how to do 3D motion tracking using Element 3D and Camera Tracker by Foundry. So, let's begin. So, first you're going to make a new composition, you know, just however long you want it, or the cinematic is. You just paste your cinematic in. So, I've got a simple terminal one. Uh, let's just make this four seconds didn't realize the cinematic was short okay that should do okay so what you want to do is first you go motion track it so you use a camera tracker so that's in the foundry camera tracker uh, also these plugins you have to download them somewhere I'm not going to supply the link, but they're really easy to find. I found both of them in like 10 minutes. It's just really simple. So once you drag that on, first you got to do track features. So what this does is it tracks all the points that are moving in the cinematic or whatever you're motion tracking, which this takes a while to do. Actually, it's going fairly fast, but as I said, this takes a while because it has to go from the beginning to there, then there to back. So I'll get back to you on it, and also what you've got to do is make sure your settings are on full quality as emotion tracks it better, and also you shouldn't have anything running on top of it. So um, I'll just pause and get back to you when it's done. Okay, now it's done. As you can see, all these points that are moving have been tracked. You can see all the crosses represent points and lines represent the movement of these points. Okay, so once you press track features and track it all, you can then go on solve camera. See this is just solving it all. And when it's done you should get this message which I don't know what it means. Now you'll see there's a bunch of green and the occasional red ones. Why I'd say ooh damn. Yeah but I'm just saying you should avoid all the red ones. You shouldn't track them. Them, uh, there's. I don't know what the issue with them is, but they just don't work. Okay, so now you've got to find a point that you want to track. So I want it to be here. So I'll just choose this one. Uh, this one. It seems like nope, nope, nope. Uh, uh, yeah, this one. See what we've got to do is choose your one then left click on it, then control, click on it, ground plane, set origin. So now what you should see is not there. Is it zoomed out? No, sometimes it's like zoomed out for some reason. No, no, no. Rookie mistake, rookie mistake. Okay, so once you've pressed set origin, create scene. Okay, um, as you can see, this is your motion track square. So um, as I move, it stays the same, it's connected to the point. So now I'm going to get into the element 3D part. So um, what you've got to do now is right click, new, then solid. Doesn't matter what size it is. So now you should get this blank thing. Okay, um, then you just get your element plugin and drag it on. So um, the solid should just become clear now. Okay, so I want to use 3D text. So what I'm going to do is go to text, then just type in to how do I spell this? Tutorial. Wow. Okay. Uh, it doesn't matter what size it is or what color it is. All it depends on or where it is in. Go away, Robin. I'm working. Okay, it doesn't matter what size it is, what tech, just all you want is the font. That's the font that you must choose. Okay, so um, now, now just make it unvisible. Now go back to your element plugin and go to custom layers, custom text and masks, and path one, choose your tutorial layer or whatever your text is called. You can see mine's called tutorial, so there. So now what I'm going to do is go on to <coughs> <coughs> 
excuse me, scene setup. So as you get this, it should look blank. And then you press extrude. As you can see, you've got your tutorial 3D text right here. So I'm just going to add a material onto it. So add chrome. And now you press OK. So as you can see, it's slightly zoomed out. Very zoomed. Nope, zoomed in. Okay, so what you should do is I have automatic keyframing on, which don't really want to turn off, so you'd want to edit it at the beginning, so I'm going to say put that back a bit or no, other way you're just saying you, you will have to edit it a bit whilst you're doing this so uh, actually I'll just turn this off position Z Go down a bit to the right. Now I'm just going to one rotate it a bit. So if rotate the X. There we go. Okay, so as you can see, very nice 3D tracking there. And also, if you want to make it make this look nicer, so as I said, I'm using the Chrome material. We could do is duplicate the background there. So, duplicate. This may take a little bit. Okay, now rename this to something that will look obvious. Go back to the element thing. Now you go back to custom layers. Now, not custom texture masks, you go to custom texture maps. And you choose this one as whatever there you want as the background. Go back to scene setup. Turn environment on. And as you can see, this is the default environment. So I'm going to choose a different one, which click environment in here. Now it's custom layer one. So as you can see, you can see the background in it, which you can either have it, the texture moving whilst it also moves, or you can just do add time and freeze frame, which basically just holds the texture, which I prefer. So um, I'll just do a little RAM preview, see what it looks like. Come on, come on. I'm, I'm just happy because this is take two and take one, it just fucked up massively. That's all. This is all I'm happy with. Okay, so as you can see, just coming down and see it's not entirely perfect as you can see it like moves a tiny bit there because um, the foundry thing it's mainly used for 2D motion tracking so just using the normal text but um, there are other ways but I'm only doing this this way because it's much more simpler because normally you have to make the, make the 3D thing in Cinema 4D export the cinematic to Buju put the Cinema 4D thing into Buju, motion track that, then export it into After Effects, whereas this, you can just do it all in After Effects. Unless you want a custom model which you can make in Cinema 4D, and then just put it into here. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. You can also go into detail and add a shadow here, which I'm not going to go into now, but if you want me to, I could at some point. So yeah, I hope you found this tutorial useful, and uh, if you do ever use this, just message me saying thank you, because any, any comments, I appreciate a lot. All positive feedback. I, I read it all. Honestly, I do read it all. And so yeah, that's my tutorial, and thanks for watching.